Hello everyone. Welcome back to our channel Food Tech Insight. This video is about the functional properties of carbohydrates. I have previously uploaded a part 1 video on carbohydrate. We summarize the basics of it. Please kindly go through it for better understanding of this video. Let's start with the functional properties of carbohydrate. Let's divide carbohydrate into two forms: sugars and starch. In sugars, the type of uh, carbohydrate includes monosaccharides and disaccharides, which contain one or two sugar molecules. Some of the examples are granulated sugar, caster or icing sugar, brown sugars, syrups, etc. In starch, the type of carbohydrate include is polysaccharide. This is made up of more than three sugar molecules. It mostly composed of amylose and amylopectin and dietary fibers also comes under starch. Some of the examples of starch are flour, potatoes, rice, pasta, bread. Next we'll move towards the functional properties of the carbohydrate. So both sugar and starch are considered as a bulk ingredient in a food product. For example, if we are considering a bakery product, the bulk ingredient means the major ingredient that we will include is that it will be the flour or the sugar, etc. So that's why it is recognized as a bulk ingredient. It provides the energy on consuming. So different function of carbohydrates are like browning, caramelization, preservation, fermentation, dextrinization, thickening, gelatinization, adding nutrients, improving the sensory properties like texture, color, flavor, appearance. So today we are going to study about the browning, the different types of browning and in depth of it, which will include the dextrinization, caramelization and of course one more term, Milliard reaction. Let's start with the dextrinization. So the browning of starch when subject to dry heat, it breaks the starch into dextrin. So what is dextrin? Dextrins are the mixture of polymers of D-glucose that is the monosaccharide unit linked by alpha glycosidic linkage that is alpha glycosidic bond. So what is it responsible for? It is responsible for changing the color of the food. Also it enhances the taste, aroma or even the flavor. A typical example you can see is the toasting of bread. This is the raw bread. After toasting, it will start changing the color. But at one point, it will unacceptable when uh, we subject to more heat. So how does it happen? So dextrin, which is the polymer of uh, alpha D glucose, are brown in color. So they have unique taste and consistency. So when this we apply heat, this starch will convert into dextrin, which will result in changing color of food to golden brown. This process is known as dextrinization. Some of the dextrin produce a pyrodextrin. This pyrodextrin can give the bread, crust and toast a toasted flavor. But previously also I mentioned uh, at one point the color is unacceptable that is known as the overcooking that causes the starch to turn to the carbon. So some of the example you can see in the bakery product like uh, this uh, uh, toasting of the bread or this crust brown color which is required in bakery product that's the process is, uh, is uh, dextrinization. Next, a very important topic in food processing, it's a caramelization, it's a considered under non-enzymatic browning. So when a high concentration of sugary carbohydrate is being heated, then caramelization process occurs. In detail, caramelization is an example of pyrolysis, a decomposition of organic compound at high heat. But in it is similar as a Maillard reaction in terms of non-enzymatic browning process. So caramelization and Maillard reaction both are non-enzymatic browning process. In the first step of caramelization what will happen? The water which will evaporate from the sugar when we uh, apply heat. Next the sugar starts to break down into smaller compounds. In simple language if you want to start, uh, understand is the sugar it is like a monosaccharide or di uh, sorry the disaccharide will convert into a monosaccharides 
for example like sucrose for example known as table sugar breaks into glucose and fructose during this step the individual sugar compounds react with one another and formed a hundreds of complicated aromatic compounds these compounds are what give caramelized foods the signature sweet and nutty taste but same as dextrinization if the sugar is left to caramelize too long the process will break down the original sugar to the point where it becomes blackened and bitter and this is the result of oxidization of sugar the functions of caramelization it's like obviously it's provide a darker brown color which is desirable like in the syrup the color changes from clear to darker brown flavors become sweeter it contributes the golden hue of baked good containing sugar also improves the flavor a simple process you can see here this is the disaccharide that is sucrose when we supply heat it will break down and the water molecules will removed and it will break down into a monosaccharide that is glucose and fructose next is maillard reaction this maillard reaction is an organic chemical reaction which reducing sugar react with amino acid to form a complex mixture of compound so in caramelization only highly sugary compounds is required for caramelization process but in maillard reaction apart from the sugar amino acid will react with it with the sugar to form a maillard reaction this reaction is responsible for the characteristics flavor and aroma of browned food this reaction can be classified as non enzymatic browning and the optimum temperature for this reaction required is 140 to 165 degrees celsius it is very important to understand that caramelization is not a maillard reaction because in caramelization the pyrolysis of sugars is required apart from sugar no other compound is present but in maillard reaction we will require a amino acid to react with it then only the maillard reaction will form so the maillard reaction mechanism begins with the formation of n substituted glycosamine along with the water from the reaction with amino group of the amino acid and the carbonyl group of the reducing sugar now this glycosamine is transformed into ketosamine by amadori rearrangement this ketosamine undergo further reaction by several pathways and can form reductants butanidine methyl glycosal and several other products of salt chain hydrolytic fission the ketosamine can also go on to form to melanoidins and other bio, brown nitrogenous polymers this impart the characteristics brown color to the food some of the common example of maillard reaction is like the formation of caramel from sugar and milk the browning of bread during the preparation of toast the change in color flavor when meat is roasted the change in color during the preparation of condensed milk so overall a summary both uh, all the three dextrinization caramelization and maillard reaction comes under the non enzymatic browning in dextrinization a breakdown of starch in the presence of heat the hydrolysis from disaccharides which then turn brown and flavor generate where is in caramelization simply oxidization of sugar at high heat in the absence of water whereas in maillard reaction it requires amino acid along with the sugar and the chemistry is very complex so with this uh, we'll end this video in the next video we'll cover this other function of the carbohydrate like preservation fermentation sensory properties thickening agent gelatinization and how it adds nutrients to a food product so thank you if you have any query do comment us or email us on foodtechinside@gmail.com you can also follow us on facebook linkedin and instagram